Hello, everyone. My name is Ruth Bridger. I'm the VP of Marketing at SORCOM, and I welcome you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about reliability, specifically best practices for achieving reliability in your IP PBX. I'm joined here by my colleague, uh, Mr. Izigal, who is the VP of Innovation at uh, SORCOM, and he's on hand to answer any t technical questions that you may have. Uh, just a little housekeeping. Uh, how, I hope that all of you can see on uh, your user interface that there is an option for you to raise your hand if you have a question. And uh, I just want to make sure, first of all, that everyone can hear me and that everyone uh, is, I guess, also paying attention. So. Um, if you can hear me, please um, click the hand icon to raise your hand and indicate that all systems are go and that you can hear me. Okay, good. At least I'm not talking to myself. I see a few uh, hands raised. Not everybody, but um, that means I guess that we can begin. So uh, a little tongue-in-cheek here, I've uh, given a subtitle to the presentation, Approaching the Five Nines with the Five R's. Um, the Five Nines uh, is uh, a measurement of computer uptime. It's uh, typically to measure an operating system, uh, how long it can go uh, unattended without crashing or without needing to be rebooted. And uh, famously, the uh, legacy uh, PBX uh, has uh, an uptime of 99.999%, which translates into a downtime of a mere five minutes uh, per year. And um, I'm sure that all of you are also familiar with the fact that uh, IP PBX is not quite that stable. But in this presentation today, I'd like to introduce some methods um, that we employ in order to approach that five nines system that I call the five R's, just a mnemonic device to help us remember uh, what each of the methods are. So let's get started. Taking a look at our agenda today, I'll give you a very brief intro introduction to TSORCOM. We'll talk a bit about asterisk uh, in generally, in general, its popularity and, on the other hand, uh, the pitfalls. We'll look at uh, traditional approaches to achieving reliability in an IP PBX. And then we'll talk about five different utilities, and these are the five R's to which I referred to in the title slide that can help you build in reliability into your telephony system. And of course, we'll leave time at the end for questions and answers. So a little bit about SORCOM. Uh, the company was established back in 2004, and we develop and manufacture uh, hardware solutions that are all based on asterisk. And we have a worldwide distribution channel. And all of our products are based on what we call XPP technology. I'll go into that a little bit later when we come to the solutions portion of the presentation. But at this point, let's just say that uh, we utilize uh, USB 2 connectivity uh, in order uh, to provide flexible and modular telephony interfaces and IP PBX uh, to our customers. Uh, we have basically two different product lines. The first is comprised of three different families of standalone IP PBX, and the difference between the different families is the number of users that they can support uh, concurrently. Uh, they're geared for the small office home office, small and medium businesses, and enterprise, uh, respectively. Uh, 
And the second product is uh, product line is a series of channel banks, uh, allowing you to extend uh, the usability and the number of uh, extensions supported uh, on your asterisk server. And about uh, our um, position in the asterisk community, our drivers have been a standard component in the uh, asterisk distribution since uh, version 1.2.4 was released in February of 2006, which makes all of our products um, native to the asterisk uh, system. So um, that lends to a very smooth installation and operation process. And now a few words about Asterisk. Uh, it is indeed a powerful open source engine. Um, and one thing that characterizes Asterisk is that it is um, continuously developed and improved by a worldwide body of developers. So it is the fastest growing uh, telephony platform uh, in the world today. A report that was recently published by the Eastern Management Group, which is a group that has been um, researching trends in telephony for decades, um, marked Asterisk as a very robust and accepted platform. Uh, according to a result of a survey that was conducted amongst about 7,000 participants, in the IT and, and telephony uh, field, they discovered that um, out of all of uh, the open source uh, solutions, Asterisk has by far and away the largest share, 85%. And on open source in general, they found that 18% of installs, telephony installs in North America in 2008 were based on open source. So um, this is no longer kind of a, uh, a fringe uh, trend or something that, uh, you know, uh, is rising and falling. It's something that's definitely gaining uh, in importance and acceptance uh, in the business world. Now, another uh, interesting thing uh, that uh, was found in this survey, and by the way, you can see on your screen that um, there is a hyperlink uh, to the uh, report there, and anyone that wishes can receive this presentation at the end of the webinar. You can see um, the full report there. But um, when they asked uh, enterprises why they chose open source uh, in order to um, implement telephony in their systems, in their, in their uh, companies, there were two main reasons. First, they indicated that uh, a very small investment was needed to get the, the system off the ground. And the second being the higher flexibility that an open source system uh, carries with it. Uh, on the dollar side, they found that open source PBXs typically cost 40% less than those of uh, uh, conventional telephone systems. And on the flexibility side, because it is open source and uh, uh, the IP PBX in general has the ability uh, to integrate uh, with other software applications. So you really do get the best, uh, what we call the hybrid approach. You get the telephony and all of the uh, data integration that you need for your telephony service when you're using open source. But this is the crunch. What happens to reliability? We know that with the legacy switches, um, they were built specifically uh, for the purpose of providing telephony in the enterprise. They're very uh, strong. They're, the uptime, as we mentioned before, is incredibly high and um, the devices are all dedicated to telephony. Whereas if we look at uh, ways that asterisk can be implemented, uh, you can take uh, pretty much uh, the distribution and install it on any PC and you have uh, 
a telephony system that's uh, based on a PC. And what I'd like to uh, talk about here is um, that we all know that as compared to legacy, with an IP PBX system, you can reduce your communication costs, especially when you're talking about multi-branch operations. Um, you can have a virtually unlimited number of international dial tone providers via SIMP trunking. Uh, without requiring any additional hardware. You have this great uh, flexibility for adding features and to integrate with the other applications. And if you participated in our last month's webinar, um, you learned that um, it's very simple to integrate these dual mode mobile phones so that you can increase accessibility of your employees while decreasing the expenses. But on the downside, Let's face it, the IP PBX cannot match the 5.9's reliability. And why is that? Well, obviously a PC is not as reliable as a legacy PBX. All of the electronics are less stable. And that's just basically the difference between a dedicated legacy system and the multipurpose PC systems. But you should note that even the industrial strength computers that are used do not much match the reliability of legacy and this is due to the nature of the software release cycle because uh, with legacy it could be years between software releases as, as opposed to perhaps months with the IPBX and again the amount of code that you have in an IP PBX due to the nature of integrating telephony with data uh, needed to support all of the additional features is much more. So um, that also lends a, a, another side to the problem. And um, one more point is that there is a different approach to um, quality assurance. With the legacy approach, it seems, you know, it's very uh, uh, typical that the specific company that supp supplies the solution is the one that's taking responsibility. While in the asterisk community, because it is open source and because uh, there are contributors from all over the world, uh, it's continually being added to and to have a, a, a system for organized QA is, is almost impossible. So what do we do? Before we get into that, uh, just um, a little graph that we've uh, prepared here. If we take a look at the first column here with the legacy PBX, Reliability, very high, as we've mentioned before, five nines, less than five minutes downtime a year. Uh, next up are the proprietary IP PBX, which considerably also very high reliability, um, not quite the same as the legacy PBX. Next are the open source IP PBX, what I call a mature release. That's where um, the software has been in the field for several months and has been used and tested and uh, checked uh, by companies and uh, uh, so it has reached a certain level of stability. And the least stable are the new release of the open source, which is something that's uh, happening on a, on a continual basis. There are builds, there are updates, there are bugs, bug fixes. So reliability of those new releases does not quite meet that of uh, its, uh, these other partners here. Um, so what are companies doing that are involved in uh, development on the Asterisk platform in ways in order to achieve reliability for their systems? Well, many of them have um, a policy of using only mature Asterisk versions and again um, I just cite this as, uh, you know, perhaps uh, the Asterisk version has been in the, in the market for um, several months. Um, I give some examples here, perhaps, uh, you know, Trixbox uh, and Elastix, uh, for example. They uh, base their distributions on Asterisk versions that have been in the field for several months. Okay. Another uh, method is to depend on uh, what I call early adopters. Now these are 
people or companies that uh, test new versions and follow the progress of the new builds, you know, on a continuous basis. Um, they're characterized by being either eager and willing community members, uh, that's a vastress community, or it could be companies that um, realize that uh, the new versions have uh, features that are particularly of value to them. So they're willing to take that little extra risk and incorporate them in their uh, offering before they've reached that real uh, maturity level. Another uh, method is to employ ruggedized hardware. Um, that's outfitting uh, the computer on which the asterisk runs with uh, such uh, components as redundant power supplies or hard drives or fans. Um, the drawback, of course, uh, with this method is that it's useless if the problem uh, encountered is software-based. And uh, on the other hand, it's also a very expensive uh, endeavor. So now we've come to the crux. This is the SORCOM way. We suggest that in order to build reliability into your IP PBX, you can employ utilities that we've developed, which do provide what we call the five R's. Redundancy, RAID 1, replicate and restore, rescue, and rapid tunneling. Before we go into the meaning of those five R's, I'm going to have to stop for a moment and describe to you the XPP technology. This I call the cornerstone of reliability as far as its ORCOM is concerned. SORCOM has developed this revolutionary concept in telephony interfaces for asterisk systems. We call it the XPP technology. It uses um, USB 2.0 ports to connect to any asterisk server. And that allows a, an aster bank, which is our channel bank, to eliminate the requirement for use of a PCI card and even for PCI slots. Now, this XPP technology enables us to provide external support for the telephony interfaces and trunks so you um, avoid a lot of the hassle of having to deal with the computer, the PC or, or whatever other type of computer on which you're uh, running the asterisk, um, to be able to have the modularity and the scalability that you need in your telephony system because with this method all the additional ports are hot pluggable and um, our systems all feature an innovative uh, design of a 19 inch rack mountable uh, unit um, and this provides both high density and a variety of uh, telephony connections I hope you can see on your screen now I've given a sample system diagram. In the center here is the 19 inch uh, rack mountable aster bank here in a 1U box. And uh, as you can see it's got the different telephony modules here for either the telephony interfaces for analog phones or trunks to go out to the PSTN, supports fax of course, and connects into the asterisk server via the USB connection. Okay, So it is external to the asterisk server. This distinctive system architecture supports also centralized management and full remote maintenance and um, all the other features, the five R's that I touched on briefly before, which promote system reliability and which I'll expand on in the course of this uh, presentation. This idea that you no longer need a PCI card or Ethernet cable in order to get asterisk connectivity, you can use the USB 2 connectivity, does solve a lot of problems and streamlines a lot of the uh, maintenance for the asterisk based system. Like I said before, no PRI is needed to, to connect to the channel bank. And um, 
everything is external, so um, you can uh, swap in and out um, extensions as needed or add uh, additional ports. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the drivers of the Astro Bank are native and asterisk, so any uh, devices are recognized um, uh, immediately uh, as soon as you plug in the Astro Bank to the, the server. There's a whole list here. I won't go through it now, but let it be said that this um, design is what solves a lot of the uh, reliability problems. We'll start by looking at redundancy. And what I'd like to describe for you is a solution that actually won uh, an award this year at the IT Expo uh, for its on-site product launch. It's basically comprised of identical PBX units that back up each other. And in case of system failure, there's an automatic switchover of all telephony ports, all IP phones, and all IP trunks. And I'll tell you that this is unique in the industry. What it does is it provides full redundancy for the complete PBX system, including the telephony interfaces. If we didn't have the USB 2 connectivity, what we call the XPP technology, uh, then uh, we wouldn't have the benefit of having the telephony interfaces and ports external to the server. So if there was a problem with the server, then you would lose um, the connectivity to the ports. But that is not the case with our solution. Uh, what you get with this is a quick and automatic failover process, and that is what keeps downtime to a minimum. There is a special firmware in the Astro Bank which um, ha has automatic detection of the server failure and knows to switch to a backup server in uh, the event of such a failure. Because it's firmware based and not network dependent, you have another level of uh, reli reliability built in. So this solution would comprise two identical IP PBX units and an Astrobank channel bank with dual USB ports. It's called TwinStar. So let's take a look at what, it, uh, what a typical setup would look like. You have uh, the primary server and the backup server. And the Astrobank uh, with the analog and or digital telephony interfaces. It's connected by USB to both the primary and the backup server. And you'll see that in this configuration, all of the telephony is located, all of the interfaces are located on the Astrobank. So, uh, say for example, you have uh, FXS ports or FXO, so you have your uh, connection to analog phones and the PSTN. For your IP phones, um, there are there's a LAN-WAN connection to both of the servers, uh, and uh, you can operate these phones through them. If we take a look at the rear panel of the Astro Bank, okay, uh, this is um, a depiction of the firmware that operates inside of the Astro Bank. And on the side, I've, I've kind of uh, given you a little enlargement of the back panel so that you can see that there are the two USB ports, one for each of the servers in the configuration. So under standard operation, the primary server is active and all the telephony is run through it. Okay? However, if the primary server fails, Okay, then um, the lines that were uh, active drop, but the firmware detects that there's been a drop and changes all telephony over to the backup server, reestablishing dial tone for the analog phones. And because we do have a method for replicating the primary server IP address on the backup, you can also get the use of the SIP phones, the IP phones, um, uh, working against uh, the backup for the server as well. 
and um, we have uh, several demonstration videos on our website um, showing in real time how this uh, works and um, it really does switch over in a matter of seconds so that's very quick and like I said um, you can receive a copy of this presentation and this is a hot link which will take you to uh, the uh, video illustration of the real live demo of the twin star. Another method for ensuring uh, higher reliability is uh, RAID 1 support. Now RAID 1 uh, it stands for, I guess it depends how you look at it, some people say redundant array of inexpensive disks or uh, it's also come to mean redundant array of independent disks. It's basically a technology that employs uh, simultaneous use of two or more hard disk drives and this will provide a greater level of reliability. And this is a depiction of how those disks uh, are, uh, work. I, we say it geometrically increases the hard drive reliability because uh, in RAID 1 the disks are mirrored so if there's anything at fault in one disk it can be picked up and utilized from the other. The system sees them as a, as a single entity. Uh, it can be uh, ordered uh, for either one of the um, two um, IP PBX that we offer for as SMB and for enterprise that would be the XR2000 and XR3000. Uh, with this solution like I say two hard disks are supplied within the IP PBX and all blocks are continually replicated and mirrored so at any one time you do have that uh, redundancy. In the event that the active hard disk fails uh, the second hard disk automatically takes over and an alarm email is sent to the system administrator. The IP PBX continues working seamlessly and the system administrator can schedule uh, maintenance at a time that's uh, convenient for him. So that's RAID 1 support. The third R is replicate and restore. Now we're all uh, aware that there are all kinds of disasters, natural disasters where backups can be complex and time consuming. But with uh, our rapid recovery utility, backups become simple. And what is it exactly? Well, uh, it's um, a little card, it's about the size of a credit card and this little tongue here, this little latch, is actually a USB 2 connection. And this card uh, is a utility and uh, includes also storage space of uh, 2 gigabytes on this disk on key. It supports all three of our IP PBX families and what it does, this utility can back up the entire PBX, that's everything, the asterisk, the distribution and all uh, user-defined options such as configuration files and voice prompts and voicemail. And what you can do is, um, you can see, you can write uh, on the card itself and give a descriptive name for each uh, backup. Now because we compress uh, our XR2000 and XR3000 files, you can fit up to four different system recoveries on a single disk on key. If you're working with our XR1000, we don't compress that so it's suitable for a single. But with this very simple method, you can always have on hand um, a backup of uh, the PBX so that if you're going to go in and make any configuration changes and you just want to make double sure that nothing has been corrupted, you keep a copy on hand and if it, for any reason you want to roll back, the restore utility is part of that same USB. Uh, so it's a very simple, uh, compact, streamlined uh, solution for backup and restoration of the entire PBX. The second part of the um, backup, restore and rescue is 
what we call the live rescue. And um, it should be looked at as a, a temporary recovery uh, utility because it's basically a disk on key that's bootable. Uh, it will run the PBX directly from the USB port. So it is a, a simple, safe, and speedy disaster recovery tool for anything from human error to disc, disc crash to any other kind of disaster. And um, how does it work? Um, basically, you have this disk on key, and you can um, take the... Uh, Restore, um, sorry, the backup that you created with the rapid recovery, that was the credit card size uh, disk on key that you saw on the previous slides, and copy the latest backup onto this uh, disk on key and simply insert it into the PBX. And the next time the PBX boots, it boots directly from the um, USB drive and so it can run the entire system bypassing the hard drive directly from the USB port and I call it a temporary uh, uh, solution because it's there until you can schedule the maintenance and if we go back or if you'll remember back to this slide I showed you um, about the guy changing a tire. That, that's how I see it, you know. If you have a problem, it's like fixing a flat on the side of the road. You get that, uh, you know, kind of funky uh, spare tire out of, your, out of your trunk, and you put it on. You wouldn't drive cross-country with that tire, but it is enough to take you to the next uh, service station so that you can get the, the problem treated uh, properly. And that's basically what this live rescue is for. The fifth R in uh, the series is the rapid tunneling utility. And this uh, utility is a way to provide uh, your customers with that uh, extra level of uh, support that it um, allows secure remote access to the IPBX um, for targeted and real-time support. And because uh, the customer himself uh, dec decides when to activate it and when not, um, then it's a perfectly safe and uh, reliable from their point of view. On the other hand, it doesn't require any technical knowledge of the end user. It's a very simple um, GUI-activated uh, program. So let's take a closer look at that. Um, it's a way to securely access the IPPBX from a remote uh, station. And uh, all of our IPPBX models come with it pre-installed. So it will allow um, the customer to receive targeted and real-time support. And like I mentioned, the end user determines when to connect or disconnect. Basically, their establishing a, uh, a session with the support lab and um, with that session the support personnel have access to the IPPBX and can investigate. They can troubleshoot any problems or perform diagnostics and even correct configuration issues if that's where the problem lies. And so all of this can be done uh, you know, real time which is a time saver. No need to travel out to the customer site and try to figure out what's wrong. And of course, when you save time, you preserve uptime. And that's why this rapid tunneling utility is included in our, in our five R's. OK, so now just a summary of how we approach the five nines with the five R's. Redundancy, if you'll recall the uh, twin star dual server approach, RAID 1 for uh, dual hard drive, replicate and restore, that was with the rapid recovery disk on key in the shape of a credit card, the rescue, the live rescue, the bootable disk on key where you run the PBX from the USB port, and rapid tunneling, which allows you 
to access the PBX remotely uh, in a controlled fashion. Um, that completes the formal part of this presentation. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We do have these webinars on a monthly basis, typically in the third week of the month. Uh, as far as the topics go, we do try to pick uh, topics that are of interest to the uh, um, the industry in general, our customers and resellers. And so I'd like you to feel free to um, drop me a line, let me know if there's any topic uh, that uh, you would like uh, to have us cover. Um, what we do is we record this and uh, we do a little editing and then we publish them on our website so you can uh, download them um, in order to uh, review the material or pass them on to a colleague and I'll send you all uh, a link uh, with the published uh, webinar at the uh, you know, once uh, it is ready. So thanks again. Um, I really appreciate your, um, your time, and um, I wish all of you uh, a very nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.